What's up, guys and girls? It's Will here from nerdy.org. That's nerdi.org. And as promised, I am showing how to use jQuery's post and get functions to fetch a page. And so right over here, we have an output file. And over here, we have an input file. And so I've already hooked it up with FileZilla, and I've opened up the input and the output. Now, the only thing to note is that the input file here is uh, um, already bringing in jQuery, so we don't have to worry about that. So over here, I'm just going to start my script tags. And just so you know, if you do not know JavaScript or jQuery at all, this video is not for you. This is for people that already know a little bit about jQuery and JavaScript and want to specifically know how to use the post and get functions in jQuery. All right, so we'll start off with get. And so we'll just do a basic um, get. And so the first thing that we're gonna put inside these parentheses is the URL to our controller file, uh, which as you can see, is slash ajax slash output.php. So we'll just put that exactly right there. And the second thing that we're going to do for now, we're going to improve this in a sec, but for now, we're just going to do function data. And data represents what the output returns back to us. And I'll just close that off. And what I'm going to do is console log data. So press yes to save that. And then we'll just go to the input, reload it, and open up the console log. And you can see that nothing is really coming out in the console log, but that's because our output does not have anything in it. So if we go to the output and we start our PHP tags, and I just do echo testing, I can reload and see that here. And now when I use this on the input, testing goes into the console uh, log because it's successfully used to get to fetch this information. All right, so the next thing that we want to do, though, is actually make this a little bit more complex. In the PHP file for the output, we want to say if is set get um, secure. And so we say, if the get variable secure is set, then we echo something, else echo nope. And then in here we'll say, if get secure equals true, echo success else, and this is where we'll just change this up to echo, whoops, change it up to echo fail. And so what we're saying on this output is we're saying if uh, the get variable secure, so like this, and if that equals true, we want to echo success. If not echo fail, and if the get variable secure is not set, we want to echo nope. Or we'll say the get variable was not set. And over here we'll say incorrect get value. And we'll just make that pretty. And then on the input here, we won't change anything. So we're going to get an error, but I want to show you that go down the get variable was not set. So what we need to do is actually add a second parameter here and it's going to be secure and for here we'll write false. And when I press yes and do this, sorry, I messed that up. <clears throat> Why 
times five. <clears throat> ah, comma. Sorry. No wonder. That's so obvious. As you can see, it was a success, which is a little bit concerning because we passed it false, and that's because I forgot the equal sign here. Um, so in a second, we should get incorrect get value. And so what that means is right now, we are going to Ajax output, and we're passing the secure get variable. And so it's moving on to this code block, and it's saying if the value is true, echo success, and if not, incorrect get value. Well, we put false, and so that's why it says incorrect get value. When I change this to true, you will see that it is a success. And so the implications of this um, go much further. Um, for example, I could say div style equals um, background color purple color um, White font size 1.5 em. Um, font weight 700. And then do that there. And so I've now made the output for success be an HTML response. And then instead of the console log here, what I'm going to do is set up just a small div and it's going to be div ID equals response. And down over here, instead of doing the console log, well, I guess we can do that as well. But we'll just add in response HTML data. And that means we want to take the HTML response from uh, the output and actually put it right here. And so you'll see that occur in a moment. So we've got a success, and if I get a fail, then obviously it won't be as pretty because we didn't set up the HTML, um, but obviously we could if we wanted to. Um, so I'll do a quick example of that, and then we'll move on to the next um, tutorial, which is going to be about the post function. So I'll show you real quick this looks like incorrect get value and if I just changed this to a different color then you can see so there's a lot of different possibilities now here's kind of the cool thing is that to do post all you need to do is just write post here and then go over here and change all your references of get to post and I'll just change the error code here so that this says post as well. And save that. And as you can see, it now updates and works with the post value instead of the get. And if I change this to true, it will start working uh, once again. Success. Um, and you can see the code here is also in the console log. And so that's really the breakdown of post and get. Um, they're very, very similar. And what you can also do is add more. So you could do uh, hello um, kitty. <laughs> and then we'll say um, that the kitty variable equals um. Or no, and then we'll say... Uh, Hi. And then over here, we can say and is set post kitty, or sorry, post hello. 
And then right here we can say, and post hello equals hi. And right now, because we've set it up as such, it will be a success. But if we change the kitty variable to by, for example, instead of hi, then we have an incorrect post value. And so as you can see, it's very, very simple to add more get and post variables um, to this little object here, and then also have this. Now, the only other thing you can do that I recommend is also having comma status. And right here, you want to say if status does not equal false or sorry, you would say if status equals equals success. And the reason for that is the um, Ajax itself can fail. And so you want to make sure that you're not trying to show the data when the data doesn't exist. So using the status variable um, as a parameter there, the second parameter will allow you to interpret that um, first. Um, so that, that's really all there is to it. There's not much. I hope this tutorial helped you. I know it was a little slow at times, but I really wanted you guys to understand how it works. Um, so just to remind you, um, you have the post or get, you have the URL to your other file, and then you have your variables your for post or get if you need them, or you can leave them blank. And then you have your function where you have the data and status parameters, or whatever you want to call them. You can change the names, but those are the parameters for that. And then once you establish the function, you can do whatever you want. And then you close the function out, and then close the post or the get right here, and then do a semicolon. And um, one other thing that you can also do, I'll show you one more thing, is that you could do button type equals button. <clears throat> click me and for the ID here we'll just do click button and then over here we can say basically document ready so that we want to establish some things when the document is ready for us to do that and we're going to make our button have an on click function Function. So now we have a function for our button, and so I'll just do e prevent default. So I'm going to prevent the default action from occurring when the button is clicked. That means that nothing happens. Um, and then right after that is when I'm actually going to do this. So this is only going to occur when the button is clicked. And if I did that right, then it should all work appropriately. Click me, and then it works. And if I change this to false, and click, then obviously it updates. Um, and if you wanted to take it one step further, I guess I could show you one other thing. Um, we'll just do um, input type equals um, text, um, and we'll just do placeholder equals secure, and then we'll just do an ID right there. Okay, so nothing too crazy about that. But then what we'll do down here is we will basically say that we want the secure variable instead of being established here, it will be established by the current value of the secure field. And that will establish whether or not the return is um, valid or not. So we do true, secure v is not defined, whoops. 
This needs to be secure V. So let me write true. And then if I write false, incorrect. And then obviously if I wanted, I could add a second post field um, to handle the kitty variable. So as you can see, it's very, very simple. Um, that's it for tonight and hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial.